Ladies and gents, welcome to today's video. This is gonna be a quick guide on how to pair this little 8-bit do remote to your Mac computer and then ultimately set it up so that you can use this to more efficiently do Anki flashcards. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to charge your remote. It uses USB-C. Small battery, shouldn't take that long to charge. First, we're gonna turn on the controller by pushing the star button, just like so. That light's gonna blink, and once it remains solid blue, that means the controller is on. Now, we wanna enter the controller into Bluetooth pairing mode. To do so, we're gonna hold the select button for three seconds until that blue light begins to blink rapidly, just like that. Now our controller's in pairing mode. We're gonna open up system settings on our Mac computer and find the Bluetooth tab up here. We should see our remote populate down here in nearby devices. So if it shows up as a keyboard named 8BitDo02 gamepad, that's perfect. Go ahead and click connect. If you get this pop-up, just exit out of it. It's because the computer does not understand what exactly it's being paired to. Once it's listed under my devices and it says connected, that means your controller is successfully paired to your computer. But it's not very useful yet because we have to set it up to work with Anki. In order to do that, we have to download a piece of specialized software. You're gonna head over to this website here. I'll leave it linked down in the description. It's called Carabiner Elements. You're gonna to wanna to download this and if you get a question asking if it's okay, yes, click allow. That file is gonna go into your downloads folder and you can open it right here. Once you get here, you're gonna double click on this package and then go through the installation process. Once it's finished, you can click close and then move to trash because we're done with the installer. If you get this pop up here, you can just exit out of that. Now we're gonna go into Launchpad or wherever you keep your applications. You should see two new applications, one called Carabiner Elements, one called Carabiner Event Viewer. We want the Elements application, so we're gonna open that and you're gonna get these pop-ups. That's because this application wants to modify or use the system preferences and their keyboard function. So we're gonna open system settings here. You may have to do this a couple times, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow this software. You'll have to put in your password or your fingerprint and we can close out of that. And there's another one here, so we're gonna do that a couple more times. Once you get this window, you can toggle these both on. Might have to use your password again. We'll close that. And then if this pop-up is still here, we will open it and you should see this pop-up. Go ahead and exit out of that. These should still be toggled on. That means you've done it correctly. So here we are. This is the software that's gonna allow us to program our remote. So here is our remote here. It's the 8BitDo02 gamepad. Now, this is where your preferences may differ from mine. The way I have my remote set up is I hold it like this and I use these two buttons as well as these four buttons up here. Now, what I do is I label these four to be one, two, three, four, corresponding to how easy or how difficult that Anki card just was. I program this button to be the space bar to show me the answer or just to cycle through cards quickly. And I program this button down here to bury cards that I don't wanna see for a little bit of time. So let me show you guys how to do that. So in our software here, you can see we have two drop down menus with an arrow in between. The way this is gonna work is in the first drop down, we're gonna pick the action that is currently programmed to the remote. Over here on the right side, we're gonna pick the action that we want the remote to actually do. So to figure out what your remote does, I'm assuming it's gonna be the same as mine, but there's a chance it's different. I'm just gonna use the little search up here because it's a quick way to drop into the keyboard. So we're gonna start with the X button here. If we click X, you can see it types the letter H, but we don't want H, we want the number one because that's gonna allow us to flip through the Anki cards and deciding how difficult that card was, how quickly we wanna see it again. So what did we say X was, X is H. So we're gonna find the letter H here. We're gonna find letter keys, scroll down until we get H. And we want the action to be the number one. So we'll go to number keys, type one. Now, if we do the same thing, instead of H, we get one. So we're gonna do that for all of these keys. So next up is gonna be this top A button. That corresponds to G currently. We're gonna add an item. We're gonna drop down the menu here and find the letter G. And we're gonna reassign that to be the number two. 
just like that. All right, our next button is this B button, and that currently corresponds to the letter J. So we're gonna add another item, find the letter J, and we want that to correspond to the number three. All right, last but not least, we have the Y button on our controller. That corresponds to the letter I. We're gonna add another item, find the letter I, and we're gonna reprogram that to be the number four. All right, so we've got these four buttons programmed. Now we're gonna do these side buttons. Again, this can vary based on how you want your remote set up, but for me, I like this top button to be the space bar. So currently, that button is programmed to the letter M. So we'll add another item, we'll find the letter M, and we're gonna change that input to be the space bar, which is under controls and symbols. There's the space bar. Last but not least for me, I want this bottom button to be the Barry card button. So currently it's programmed to the letter K. So we'll find the letter K here under letter keys. There's K. And we want that to correspond to the hyphen, which is the shortcut to Barry cards inside of Anki. All right, we finished programming the controller. We can go ahead and exit out of this. Those changes will be saved. You can see up here, we've got a new icon. That is the software we just programmed. So if for some reason, when you restart your computer, this does not show up, you'll just go back into your applications and open that Carabiner Elements program like that. Now let's make sure it's working. We're gonna open up Anki. While my cards are syncing, we're just gonna go ahead and test out the buttons again. So this should be one, two, three, four. This should be spacebar. This should be the hyphen symbol. So those are set up just as I want them to be. The other buttons are still gonna do random things. These are currently programmed to some letters. If you really wanna get advanced with it, you can also adjust the buttons down here, but I'm happy with just having these four spacebar and the Barry card shortcut. So here we are inside of my Anki. Let me just pick a random deck here and we'll go ahead and study this. So traditionally inside of Anki, we would use the spacebar to see the answer to the question and then we would use one, two, three, or four to decide how difficult that was, or we'd use minus if we wanna bury the card. At least that's how I do it. Now, instead of using the keyboard, all we can do is just use the controller. So remember space bar up here, boom. Here's our question, ready for the answer. Space bar again, how do I feel about that? Well, I thought it was kinda of hard, so we're gonna click A, which corresponds to two. Once again, space bar, answer, how was that one? Oh, that was really easy. That's gonna be four, just like that. This card, well, I'm not actually sure I wanna see that yet. We're gonna bury that just like that. You can see we got one card buried. So there you have it. That's been a hopefully quick and comprehensive tutorial on how to link your little 8-bit do remote to your MacBook. For Windows, it's gonna be a little bit different. I've actually done this on a couple different MacBooks. You can link this remote to multiple computers, but if you have them both open and running, it gets a little bit confusing. So probably not gonna be the use case for many people, probably just gonna have this linked to one computer. But there you go, leave me comments down below if you have any questions, run into any troubles, or have any updated advice for anybody else trying to accomplish this. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.